I'm Pete Zielinski with Additive Manufacturing Magazine, and I am here with Dr. Tim Simpson, co-director of the Center for Innovative Materials Processing through Direct Digital Deposition at Penn State University. So Tim, uh, you've got an additive manufactured part with you. We understand that a 3D printed metal part is usually a machined part. There are um, potentially defects in the surface, uh, witness marks like 3D printing layer lines. But there is another phenomenon that could affect the surface quality and the form to an even greater extent, and that has to do with the way the model is defined for additive manufacturing. So talk about that. Absolutely. So this is actually a uh, upright for the suspension on the Formula Race Car team here at Penn State. Uh, Vincent Morano was an undergrad working with my colleague Todd Palmer to design and optimize this, and eventually you want to print a functional component and put it on the car. Like most 3D printed models, you start out in a CAD program, develop your solid model, uh, and then you export an STL file that then you read into uh, your build preparation software, Magix or NetFab, something along those lines. So the problem is after you've finished creating your uh, solid model in your CAD program and export it into an STL file, you approximate your perfect geometry, which are a bunch of little lines or triangles that then gets read into your build preparation software. Those uh, approximations and triangles can actually lead to a unique feature as well as you can see on the surface here. So this is the result of not the layering that goes on, but actually uh, a series of small lines and triangles used to approximate uh, a perfect circle uh, that you've already uh, designed in your CAD package. So I, I do see that. I see the, the straight line facets on the curve of the part here, and, and more significantly on the idea of this bore. Is the part usable this way? Actually, no. So think about if you've got a shaft or a bearing rotating inside here, and now it's clunking along instead of a nice smooth surface. So you definitely need to, uh, again, common misconception, hey, if I print it, I'm done. But no, we really need to think about how are we going to machine this, uh, adding machining allowances, what are the critical interfaces uh, that are mating surfaces and those sorts of things. And so you are definitely want to uh, take those considerations into, into mind uh, when you're creating your geometry and printing your part. I wanted this bore to be round, and it comes out not round. It's made up of little line segments. What do I do about that? Sure. So a couple of options for you. One uh, natural is let's you know, approximate it with more and more smaller and smaller lines and smaller and smaller triangles. Uh, your file is then going to blow up really, really big because now you've got a bunch of triangles to approximate that. And those little triangles, certainly making sure all the corners meet up and everything, you could have errors in your, in your STL file. The other idea is that some 3D printing companies are actually now creating software that pairs with their 3D printer so that you actually take your CAD file directly and slice it up and print it. So 3D Systems, for instance, 3D Expert, they use direct metal printing where you go directly from your native CAD so your perfect circles are sliced and then sent to the printer to print. There are others working on that type of capability as well. And then finally, you can think about, well, I know I'm gonna have to machine it, so let's actually make sure we add enough machining allowances on there. Or depending on the, the orientation of the part as you're building it, there may be support structures in here. So let's actually design uh, machining guides to help align the tool on that. Let's create uh, features to help uh, hold our datums to create references that then make it easier to machine, bore out interfaces, uh, or flatten critical interfaces in your part. Thank you.